Welcome to 5 Minute School and in today's video we're going to be talking about the collecting duct of the nephron. So what we know already from the last few videos is the fluid which is surrounding the collecting duct and in the renal muddle it is very hypertonic so it's very highly concentrated and that's mainly due to the active transport of sodium chloride out of the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. So what's going to happen is the, f the collecting duct has to channel its fluid through this uh, highly concentrated environment. And uh, when the fluid finally reaches the collecting duct, it's actually going to be quite hypotonic because of all the removal of the salt uh, from the previous ascending limb. So uh, the medullary region of the loop, sorry, of the collecting duct is going to be impermeable to this high concentration of sodium chloride but the actual entire wall of the collecting duct is permeable to water, which means that if we're in a state of dehydration, the body is able to retain water in the body by allowing the water to be transported out of the collecting duct via water channel proteins. So, because the surrounding interstitial fluid in the renal medulla is very hypertonic, water is drawn out of the collecting ducts by osmosis, and uh, what happens is once the water moves out of the collecting duct, it doesn't dilute this highly concentrated environment of the renal medulla. Instead, the water molecules which are drawn out, they're going to be taken away by capillaries which are surrounding the actual collecting duct, and those are peritubular capillaries, which we've mentioned in the, the previous videos. So, just moving forward, this osmotic gradient was created by the counter current multiplier system. I have made a video to that and I will link, link that in the description below. So this counter current multiplier system provides the force for water reabsorption through the collecting ducts. And the osmotic gradient is normally quite constant, but the rate of osmosis can be varied by adjusting the permeability of the walls to water. And this is done by regulating the number of aquaporins in the plasma membranes of the collecting duct epithelial cells. So the aquaporins are these water channel proteins and through a variety of hormonal responses, we can vary the number of aquaporins in the actual collecting duct to, um, well, based on how dehydrated the body actually is. So that's everything I'm gonna discuss in this video. The next video will be talking about the hormone ADH and we'll be talking about aquaporins and their mechanisms in more detail. Thanks for watching.